good for now, uh, you know, today, to make this decision. But um, anyways, um, so that's what's happening. We're now going to have some, you know, some counties that are going to have higher buck to doe ratios than others, you know, just because the caps have come forth uh, with, the, with that recommendation. Um, and so uh, are we okay with that? So, Commissioner Rain. You know, if we're going to go for higher buck doe ratios and want to see what it does to the population, and, you know, I can, that's a reasonable thing to do to do it as, call it an experiment and see where things lie. Generally, it requires more than one year. If we're going to have um, Lincoln County manage a particular, for example, manage a particular unit for 40, 45 percent, leave there for a couple, th couple three years. And I do this, of course, it's going to come next year. But, you know, as a FY for the department, you know, it's probably a good idea to leave it there for a couple, three years. See what the effect of, on that particular unit is next to the ones around it. And, of course, it's not going to only be one unit. There's a whole bunch of others. It, is, it does provide a tool by which you can look, compare those units to the ones around them for whatever good that will get you. And it will probably get some good. You'll be able to see are there <laughs> distinct differences in hunter success ratio. Yes, no. So, um, point class, yes or no. You might be able to get other, uh, something from that. Not totally unopposed to the um, motion in general. I am highly concerned about certain units where we've jacked up the tags despite falling populations. Like Area 17, for example, we're projecting a uh, decreased population of 100, and yet we're more than doubling the tags. I, or, well, roughly doubling the tags. Call it roughly doubling, more than one, a little and less. You know, other units such as Area 10 where we're jacking the tags basically through the roof with a 1,500 less population. We've talked about that. Maybe that's carrying capacity despite the lack of da any data whatsoever. Okay, fine. Beating that through the roof. Um, area 1 up here, or I should say 0, 011 through Area 13, we're talking about 400 less estimated population. We're more than doubling the tags. You know, you do need to look at that as, I bet next year you're going to see problems. There's problems. I foresee problems. I think. Um, when we come up with this, whatever we approve, if we approve this or next, I would like to see the department come up with ratios straight off of this, whatever we approve, whether it's what's just proposed or the next, for muzzleloader, a proportional, for muzzleloader, for archery, non-resident. We take a break. They come up with that bring it back to us as a basis for our next discussion point. It might save us some time. <laughs> Thank you. I'm ready. Commissioner Drew. Yeah, just to clarify, I mean, part of the reason for my motion and, and what I'm looking at, the one thing I've learned from living my whole life in Nevada is there's no issue, and especially when it comes to wildlife, where one size fits all. And I think we've got a pretty good mix. For I mean, we could forecast until our hair falls out. Mine probably is going to fall out a little quicker now that uh, we're dealing with these sorts of issues. But I mean, we can't look in a crystal ball and know what happens. We have to deal with this year. Um, and I think with the quotas that we've got and the mix that we've got, we've got our a pretty d decent balance of opportunity and a pretty decent balance of some areas where someone could go out or keep putting in and, and use some of their bonus points. So. Like I said, I don't think it's a one-size-fits-all. I think it takes into account the local input, um, and I'm comfortable with it from both uh, the sportsman who wants to be a trophy guy and from the sportsman who wants an opportunity. I think we've got a pretty good balance. Okay, now that is certainly, you know, you know something along the lines of a Utah model where you've got some units that uh, you have higher buck to doe ratios and, uh, and units that you're actually, uh, uh, you know, looking for better opportunity. Um, so that that makes sense to me, but is you know we we've got the department who has come forth with the proposal uh, for you know pretty much 30 bucks uh, to you know, 100 does across the table, and uh, that was what the biologist you know uh, uh, recommended, and uh, and I just want to point out that that's you know so it's a social you really you're basically uh, going down a social path and uh, absolutely. Okay. And I think that's our responsibility. And again, that's why, I mean, I appreciate what the department's doing. And it's not to slight their folks. I have the utmost respect for them. Um, 
we're just taking some social considerations into account, which is our job, in my opinion. Mr. Rob, I, I, I'm reviewing uh, the motion that Jeremy just made, and I second it. And I second it just to get the discussion going. And and uh, uh, as soon as I second it, uh, Chairman Macbeth looked at me and says, "Are you comfortable with that?" And uh, at first I wasn't, uh, but I wanted to have this discussion. And the, one of the reasons I wasn't as comfortable as I thought I should be is I'm looking at what numbers the department proposed this year and and uh, what numbers Commissioner Drew threw out. But then I start looking at where we were last year and where we were proposed last year. I'm, I'm reaching the goal that I want, and that's increased opportunity also. Uh, it's, it's getting closer to where I want to be on the opportunity side, and, that, and that's important to me. And so with the 10 minutes I've had while everybody else is discussing to review the numbers that are thrown out, I'm getting even more comfortable with Jeremy's numbers. Mr. McNinchy, any? Uh... No, I. Well, I really was going to try to stay off the radar the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> but having said that, you know the um, th there's a point. There's a point. I mean, 40 bucks per hundred does, um, which is where we're at, give or take, um, is is high. You know, we're we're the highest. Uh, that's the highest in the western states by double in most accounts. And uh, you do, when you do attend these <coughs> WAFA meetings, uh, people will flat ask you, are you really managing it that high? And, and when you say, yeah, they're like, that is unbelievable, you know, because they're sitting there freaking out about going to 22, 23. I mean, that, you know, 25 is just beyond them. Um, and here we're trying to come down uh, with these massive discussions to 30. And um, I think the point is, is that the higher you get with that, the more the more uh, pressure you put on that herd to stay healthy and there's more challenges for the and uh, and I think um, what I'm wishing that we had was a really a really uh, very complete yield their management plan but it's just not in place yet I'm <coughs> hoping that we continue to move forward with that or maybe we can start identifying these this this is age-old stuff you know where we're going to manage for uh, for uh, uh, you know buck to doe ratios um, Mike, you'll remember we had the discussion here. We were held hostage there one day with uh, a unit on the granites. Um, are we going to do uh, 030 and the guy comes in and uh, we, you know, I know who it is. I'm just not going to say on the record. Uh, if you don't go to a 37, um, then forget the access. Uh, and he could leverage this commission uh, to make a decision. I think we've settled in between somewhere, <coughs> somewhere in between the two. But the point is, is that the discussion, that was such a big number that the commission almost threw up on itself even trying to talk about well here we're looking at 40 plus and we're trying to come back down um, so you know it is it goes up and down and it's all over the place but uh, um, I think that we do have to, to work towards uh, that 30 until uh, maybe there's some mule deer management plan uh, is is uh, is getting more defined and more refined um, I do struggle with doing it all at once I mentioned that to you guys um, I think I think what Commissioner Drew's thrown out um, starts heading us in the direction where we can start you know there's some balance it, this is it borders on impossible to balance but uh, I think that it's awfully close and, uh, and uh, you know I don't know biologically what that does to us but I'm sure you guys are going to tell us that there's not a sword to th fall on uh, too bad at least and um, uh, so you know generally speaking unless I hear something different I'm, I'm fairly uh, supportive of the recommendation at this point Okay, uh, did we have? Did, no, I was somebody was doing my show. Okay. Um, well, I'm, you know, I, I certainly have my own personal beliefs, in, and I, uh, but I'm really, uh, I'm really trying to, uh, um, you know, as a sportsman rep, I, I really, uh, you know, struggle with, with this because I, I know sportsmen that are both trophy hunters and uh, other guys that just uh, love to hunt, so. Anyway, um, but this, you know, I guess it is a, g a good mix. Um, but uh, I guess, uh, I guess, you know, if we're going to go with something like this, then I, I think we ought to be looking at it every year and oh, and uh, be completely, uh, you know, if uh, you know, if we start seeing some some benefits coming out of these other units, uh, then you know, maybe we ought to rethink uh, 
you know, some of these other, uh, other units with the higher buck to doe ratios. But okay, uh, well, uh, any uh, any further discussion? Uh, okay, we have a motion and a second. Yeah. Can I get clarification? I know Tony was headed to say something earlier. Oh, okay. That's what I was asking. Somebody was. It's, who knows what it was now. I, I, <laughs> I, I guess I would just like to say that, you know, that there was a series of events that occurred to, to bring us here on Mule Deer at this point today. Um, not the least of which is our the biologists wading into the social arena. So I mean, we can talk about a 2.9 percent increase in populations and and umpteen hundred percent increase in quotas. But there's there's a couple things that that I just feel compelled to explain as to you know why we are where we are with these recommendations. And some of it's redundant with things that I've already said. But you know people say, well, you know, you don't have to do the whole state. Well. As biologists, where you know where do we decide? Where do we make that call? Where does you know we, we start drawing those lines? And then Lincoln County says, well, why is it in our backyard? And White Pine says, you know, not not us. Do it over there. Uh, or you have one outfitter that says, why are you taking it down to 30 in my area, and not across the street in, in so and so's area? Um, you know what we've seen. You know, granted, we we only grew 2.9 percent in our population estimate, but. We saved a whole lot of bucks last year, so our buck ratio grows. So we can have a, a percentage increase in the recommended quota that's not proportionate to the increase in the population because our quotas are derived from the proportion of the population that's bucks. Um, you know, these these aren't. You know, I, I don't. I don't. When I hear those numbers, to me, those aren't compelling arguments. I I anticipated hearing a lot of arguments based on hunter congestion. Um, but to have people come up here and, and talk about an area uh, that's modeled at, at 60 bucks per 100 doe is a pre-hunt estimate and has had a four-year average of four point or better of 48 uh, and say that they're shooting all their recruitment, I know there's no way in the world that that's going on. Um, so I, you know, again, we don't have a sword to fall on. We're, we're more than comfortable with the recommendations and we're also more than, than you know, willing to, to sit back and let you guys do the hard work of, of drawing the compromise with the social aspects. We're not quite comfortable. Yeah, you I can. Either, <laughs> well, that's why I wanted, I wanted yeah. you guys to speak, because I know that you guys have been very candid over the years, Mike. Um, I can't believe that you're, it's nice to have Tony there next to you, isn't it? It is. It definitely is. <laughs> but, you know, my mom said, if I have nothing good to say, don't say it at all. So Hopefully, that's, that's never quite necessary. <laughs> so. Well, but, I didn't but, get much when I did in the past, <coughs> so I figured. Why, why bother? No, I mean, if there's an issue, biologically, we need to hear it. And, and I, again, I'm not slighting or, I, what you guys gave us is exactly what I asked for three months ago. And, again, my recommendation is no slight to what you did. Without this, we're lost. I mean, we have nothing to start from. So if there's some biological concerns you have, I want to hear them. We know, I mean, we're comfortable with the numbers we provided. Cutting them isn't going to give us any biological concerns. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not arguing that uh, we need to get these buck ratios down to get our fawn ratios up. And I wouldn't try to compare what Utah's done. There's a reason they chose the areas that they chose for trophy areas, and that probably has to do with habitat quality. You can probably produce more fawns in those areas. Um, but to suggest that, that biologically that 30 bucks is going to somehow affect these populations negatively, um, it's just it's not going to happen. Uh, I, I worry about the future of hunting. I worry about, you know, but that's not my job. My job is to give you a biologically based and safe level of, of you know, harvest level. It's hard to sit here and listen to the people talk about what a horrible drought and now we're going to have to close allotments and we're going to have to get animals off the range but we're going to let the population grow by saving bucks. That Biologically that makes absolutely no sense to me but that's that's social. Uh, yes. Go ahead. Uh, right. um, thank you Mr. Chairman. I, I think after looking at this the only the only ones that are really sticking out at me right now are the 141 to 145 early and late. Those are the ones that we really made a drastic 
change over the department's <coughs> recommendations. I mean, some of them we've made. There's another one up here that's a, a pretty big one too, but that's Humboldt, and that we've already discussed that. But the department recommended 655, and we've gone to 239 in the motion, which is below the 2011 recommendation that we didn't even do. So those two, early and late, are the, the two that I that I question on that are involved in this motion. And I, I, that's what sticks out to me at this point. I would add biologically that uh, it. There was some tough survey years in, in 14. However, this year um, we got a really good survey in there, both in terms of sample size at, at 1,456 animals, but had a fall buck ratio, observed buck ratio of 36. And that's the other thing is we, we talk about observed buck ratios, and there is never a time where you're going to see a higher proportion of your bucks in the population. You're always going to be seeing fewer by nature of, of their behavior. They're more solitary. They're in smaller groups. They're off by themselves. So to actually go out there, see 1,400 animals with a buck ratio of 36, we feel biologically solid with, with that population. I'd be open to a friendly amendment on that. Move. Previous yeah. question. We think we're good. And I'd like to see where, where the commission is at on this at this point. I think we're still open for discussion. So yeah, yeah absolutely. I I, yeah. I, I'd feel more comfortable if we went at the bare minimum of the 2011 recommendation mm. and I, I I maybe like 325 for the early and previous question is not amendable it's not debatable it requires immediate vote <laughs> motion to amend I'll make a motion to amend okay mm. so what is vote down What's that? <coughs> or don't pay the rules, I don't care. So, a motion to amend would include Jeremy's original motion, but changing 141 to 145 early from the 239 to 325. And the 141 to 145 late from 28 to 40. Second. We're going to be able to keep this all straight. Yeah, and I'm open to that being a friendly amendment to the original motion as well. Okay. And so you second I second. I'm <laughs> I am too. I was just okay. trying to avoid. Okay, I, I like I like it better that way. Uh, I'm I'm now working off of uh, Jack has got. I don't know, Jeremy. You have you have the same thing, right? Uh, I'm actually looking at Jack, and that's the one I'm I've been going off of. Um, and so uh, anyway, okay. Any commissioner ranks. You know, I was struggling with the previous one. Thing, you know, I might as well vote for it because it's, you know, but area 14, it, if you guys hear what, that, what they're saying over there, there are massive issues. And maybe it would be better for the cab to come back up and reiterate what those issues were. It's not these, these gentlemen who, it was interesting, I mean, I hadn't even spoken to a couple of them that, you know, showed up meeting and were voting on these issues about it. I was trying to, you know, they came up with this most well, certainly without my input, and Mr. Evans, who I do know fairly well, he would not bend to a word I said any more than anyone else in this commission was. There are extremely good reasons that they gave in their meeting to do this. And perhaps maybe they should reiterate those reasons. It is perhaps vital to the deer herd that it is extremely conservative. And you know, if it's wrong, I say, go with what they recommended, Give it a while. If it's wrong, change it in a couple of years. But they have some extremely legitimate reasons. Mr. Evans, one thing I can tell you about him is he knows more about range conditions than probably anyone else in the area because he's been around and that's what he does for a living. And there are some very legitimate reasons why they did come up with that and they were unanimous in their decision to do that. So, you know, 
maybe it's, uh, it's the local area that I've been at and I'm really worried about it. Hey, if, if I have one thing, it'd be nice to get a tag. It would be Area 14, personally. Please cut the quotas or re-leave them where they were last year. That's what the cabs are, is saying. And I think they know something about the area, all the individuals on the cab that maybe have not, the commission does not fully realize. They know a lot about it. I question a lot of other cabs' decisions here. I don't, I mean, I look at a couple of these other areas and I haven't even brought up. I worry, but I'll go with the cab's recommendations. If we want to make it, you know, unanimous, I think, at this commission, go with the original motion before it was, for this amendment. And even though I really, 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 and you know how much I really dislike it, I'll vote for it anyway, the original one, but this one. Okay, thank you. Okay. Just, just one thing, real, real quick. What I'm looking at here, I'm looking at the cap, I'm looking at our biologists, they just told us that we had the best count that they've had in years and they have every confidence in it. Quite frankly, if I really wanted to go with the biologists 100%, I probably should have said 655 and 68. I'm trying to strike kind of a balance here in between the two. I mean, we added 100, not even 100 tags. What is that? 90 something. Nine, yeah. Nine so, I, I stick by my I stick by my amendment. Yeah, and I and I'll, I'll tell you that brings the number up to what the recommendation was last year, as opposed to what the tag got tag quota got cut to last year, and um, and I'd almost be to the point where I'd make an amendment to the motion to add uh, another hundred tags on on top of what you have. <laughs> uh, so that's the that's the inclination I'm going. So uh, if that gives you any idea. Uh, uh, what I'm thinking. Uh, I will. I will tell you just uh, the harvest data. We had 64% hunter success and 67% four point or better in there in the late season last year. On top of seeing 36 bucks per 100 does with a sample size of almost 1,500 after the season. Um, you know, given that it's just profound. Um, And I would add, I would like uh, I would make a motion uh, just to amend the motion to increase 141 145 early to 425 and uh, what would the number be? Uh, increase the quota from one and 141 to 145 late uh, to 50. Yeah. Okay, motion to second on that amendment. Mr. Chairman, a point of clarification. I, I'm not following all this because you keep changing it every five seconds. Basically, what we're going to do is follow all the cabs recommendations except for one cab is that it mm, no 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 then then white pine so yeah one and a quarter basically i gotta tell you this new day business start to sound more like hope and change all the time Okay, well, uh, we've got, uh, and um, I would, uh, would you be, uh, uh, Commissioner Drew, would you be agreeable to allow that to, to be an amendment to your motion and include it all as one motion, or do you want to vote on that separately? No, I'm fine with it. Okay. I request that the Eureka Cab be allowed to speak, uh, I, ask, I ask them to speak upon this matter and what they think about it. That would be a question I would have to them because that's being directly to them. Um, I, I, I think we, uh, I think we heard the uh, the caps. Uh, did, I, well, let me ask. Let me take. Do we need to hear any more caps? If we let one in, I mean, we're gonna have to talk to all of them. You're only spiting one, and it's only fair. You're only spiting one. Okay, and you're I'll probably you not spiting them. You pro It seems to me it's personal I, I have, against me. But we want to leave it as an amendment and listen and 
have the cab respond. Okay. To Maybe that's a clean then I'm going to have, if I'm going to be fair, then I'm going to have the uh, uh, Eureka County cab and the White Pine County cab come up. Because we're slighting, uh, I think that uh, those are the two that uh, we're not following. So, uh, White Pine first. Uh, Thomas Brunson, White Pine. We're comfortable with the uh, augmentation to our recommendation to go with what Lincoln County recommended. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Eureka? Uh, commissioners, uh, again, Jim Evans for the record. Eureka Cab, ladies and gentlemen. Um, during last uh, field season, I did spend uh, measurable time in... Uh, the diamonds flying and um, from my perspective my personal perspective I think the numbers were considerably down I, I, I agree with uh, uh, the surveys that were compiled by Endow uh, I'm not having a problem with that I think our, our real concern here is the the base population estimate and we re we recommended or we asked our biologists if we could possibly refine this by uh, incorporating additional flights uh, and he indicated probably the best strategy <clears throat> would be to uh, request a long-term study for Area 14, which we plan to move forward with and partner, obviously, Eureka County would partner with Endow, uh, the BLM, and the University of Nevada because we want to get a, we want to get a, a more uh, <coughs> definitive uh, 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 window or grasp on where our population is at and what the suppressional factors are at this point in time that are limiting this population from expanding. I agree, uh, obviously, with increased buck harvest, we're probably not going to have a real major or significant impact on our breeding population. But at the same time, uh, I think the balance that we're looking at at this point in time based upon environmental factors, uh, we'd rather go into Christmas with a greater number of animals total in anticipation that there will be a, a measurable loss a, uh, in terms of the, the percent, if we look at percentage and, and ratio, uh, if we go next winter uh, into uh, uh, Christmas at uh, 3,500 head or 4,000 head versus, let's say, 3,000, uh, we're going to have the opportunity to uh, restructure that population the following spring and, and have a stronger population uh, moving forward into spring of, of uh, 2013. So it's basically a, a, a concern uh, with this base population in terms of where we're at now, where we'll be come Christmas, and how what those numbers may look like in spring of 2013 if we were to, uh, in essence, reduce the the number that are going to be taken through harvest in anticipation that there could be a measurable take or, or impact from Mother Nature this, uh, this summer and, and going into fall. So that's where we're at with it. And, and uh, again, we're very conservative. And it's, it is a social impact because we're going to bring in an additional 800 hunters uh, with the proposed quota. Uh, I could probably sell to the board and to the community the, the 325 and the 40 uh, that, that you had discussed just a few minutes ago because it's not a real significant gain. Uh, the numbers are, are manageable. We, uh, we could probably deal with those, but if we, if we start getting, that, getting close to that, uh, that quota at 800, I think the impact is going to be more of a, uh, at least in the short term, a social impact, and then we're going to have to deal with that. So that's where we're coming from. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Tony, could you respond to the base population comments? Uh, what would you think about that? Absolutely. Um, the way that we use the, the buck ratio is we have, we have a pre-hunt estimate of the number of bucks in a population. Every single one of our populations that's modeled has a pre-hunt buck ratio, a buck number of bucks estimated. We issue the tags. Hunters go out there and they harvest. We get the questionnaire data and we return, we remove those harvested animals from that pre-hunt estimate. And that predicts what we should observe on our post-hunt survey. Uh, if we see that buck ratio higher than what the known harvest removal was, then we know 
that we underestimated that population. If we see that buck ratio lower, then we know we overestimated. So we use that buck ratio to set the quota. We remove the known harvest, and we track that buck ratio as a way of truing the magnitude of the population. So when I say we had a buck ratio of 36, that's not to say that, well, the population could be smaller, <coughs> but if we look back at four or five years in, in Area 14, we have maintained our hunter success. We've actually uh, improved in the last four years over the four years prior to that, and we've maintained our four-point better uh, four point or better in the harvest. So while maintaining those things and then going out and getting a survey at 36 um, tells us that, that the magnitude of the population that, that, that we're, we're where we need to be in, the, in that estimate. Okay. I'm uh, comfortable with my motion. Move to amend the motion to 239 and 28 in area 14 and leave everything else as original. <laughs> so on. Yes, and seconded. Okay, I have a motion and a second on that motion. Okay, um, I think we've uh, we're uh, where we need to be. Uh, so we have we're going to basically do two motions. We're going to uh, do the amendment to the motion, the last amendment to the motion. Uh, we'll vote on that, and then uh, uh, we'll see where we're at. And we'll then vote on the uh, the main motion. Okay, so uh, any, any, well, let me ask uh, any discussion with. So just, just to be clear, the 425 and 50 is now 239. Is what it was? Is accepted into my motion. Yeah. And yes. that's acceptable in the second. Yes. And then we have an amendment now on the table for 239 and 28. Right? In a second. Okay. Right. Okay, so we're going to vote on the amendment to the motion. Uh, just, just for purposes of keeping things clean. That's how we're going to. There was a motion to amend and a second to go to 325 and 40. And there was a motion to amend and a second to go to 425 and 50. And those motion makers, I think it would be much cleaner if we were to retract our motions with regards to those two additional amendments and then come back to what you originally uh, asking to, for, the, your, for your proposal to be brought back in. And then we're just dealing with what you're what we're talking about. In what order? I would, I would, because we can pull back on the amendments at any time. So I would, I would. Because he's the. I, 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 but we had two, two. We still have two pending amendments. amendments. No, but don't. Seven. No, but we. What and we did on both of those report. pending amendments, mm -hmm. we incorporated those into the main motion. Okay. Did we properly? Did we properly to get rid of the, the amendments? Rule says the they should have um, gone. Yeah, yeah, we should have voted on this. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Previous motion a long time ago. Down here. Yeah. There's quite nodding on this end. And okay, good. As long as that's taken care of. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, so we're going to vote now on the amendment of 239 and 28. Right. Okay. This is a new day, after all, and we're going to pay attention to what the cabs have to say. So, okay. in a new day. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 No, hey. oh, <laughs> okay. No new day. This is the old day. <laughs> okay. We're voting on the amendment to the motion, which is the 239 and 28 on units on the units uh, 141 to 145. Okay. All in favor of that amendment, say aye. 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 All opposed. Nay. Nay. <laughs> okay. Motion fails. Okay, now we're at we're now we're at the uh, the main motion, and do we need to go over the entire main motion? Or are we comfortable? Uh, because I am going. Oh, Pete. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm a little bit confused how we lost the 325 and the 40 number, simply because the member from the Eureka cab said that they could bend to that number and, st and to stay consistent <coughs> with what we've done with the other cabs that agreement of 325 and 40 in my mind would add consistency to the to the main motion um, that is true uh, and that uh, and then after listening to the department's recommendation and the data on that unit, uh, I made a motion to amend that 
to increase it by 100 tags because uh, we, we are really deviating, in my opinion, from the department's recommendation, uh, you know, and I feel that the, uh, the Eureka County cabs, uh, in my opinion, and the reason I made the motion that the Eureka County cabs recommendation uh, does not, uh, did not adequate deal in my mind with the, with the uh, department's data uh, on the population. And so that's why we made the motion. So, and, and from procedural standpoint, uh, uh, all the motions were made on this end and they agreed uh, to incorporate that motion into the main body of the motion now. So it's there. So the 325 was an interim part of the motion. It's now gone. Okay, so I'm so that I'm clear with it then. If <clears throat> if I don't agree with the 141 through 145 numbers, you want? Are you saying I have to vote? If I don't agree with that, I have to weigh that out and decide to vote against the the main motion or modify it. Okay. Don't you move to? Okay, I, uh, I see where this is going. Amend to what sounds you like. like. It sounds like and. Sounds like Commissioner Moore. I would like to vote on the last motion uh, separately, and I'm okay with that. Okay, and so I will. Uh, do I have to do it by motion, or I can just? I think the cleanest way would be to have Commissioner Moore. I you made it propose an amendment that, okay. that he's okay. comfortable with. Okay. I'll move to amend the main motion to go with the numbers in Hunt 141 through 145 at 325 for early and 40 for late. Okay. So we have an amendment to the main motion. Uh, any further discussion? You need a second. You need a second. You need a second. Okay, we need a second. second. I thought we had one. You have a second? Yeah, second. Okay, we now have a second. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and call for a vote for the motion. All in favor of the amendment to the motion uh, say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Okay. Motion fails 5-4. Uh, okay, now we're we're at the main motion. Mr. Chairman. Um, yes, Mr. Commissioner Schrum. Now I'm even more confused. What happened to the original motion that uh, Mr. Howell made? Mm -hmm. That got fell by the wayside. Yeah, that's, Did we lose that? That's yeah, long gone. We just discarded it. Just get it over yeah. with. Jesus. Well, no, not, I'm going to piss a little more here. Well, let's not confuse, confuse the issue with facts. Okay, I think I think where we're at is we're on the main motion now, and I think we've discussed it. I think we know where we're at. I think I'm going to piss about it a little more because you've pissed about. I mean, come on, this is a new day, and the new day is let's get petty. And it's, I mean, you know, I think uh, you know somebody said said it famous here. Um, actually, a guy from Elko that read a letter earlier said, you know, this this, sir, this is petty. Let's go with what the bloody cab said. This is wrong. You know it's wrong. I mean, if you're voting for this, then it's it has nothing to do with biology. This is simply being petty. Again, and it's singling out one cab, probably because maybe you don't like me. Okay, fine. Don't punish the deer herd. Thank you. Okay. That's what it is. Mr. Rob. Can I respond? I need, I need to respond to that. I don't, I don't believe it's petty. I, I, I believe that White Pine County, Humboldt County, Lincoln County came with a reasonable approach to get this commission to consider something other than what the department's done. Eureka County came with something that I didn't think was as factual or, you know, talking to Tony and listening to Tony. I don't think it held the same water as what the other counties brought, and that's what's weighing on my decision. Okay. Okay. Um. I think we've discussed it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call for a vote on the main motion. Uh, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. Okay, motion passes six to three. Okay, now how do we want to do uh, the rest? Do we want to give you guys some time to well, see I, if you can adjust them all uh, I think proportionately? The, I think the recommended changes for the muzzleloader and archery are, are close enough. Uh, we what we can do is we can go through those two and then if we when when we get through muzzleloader and archery there's there's a small number of relatively straightforward recommendations from the counties um, and if it's the commission's decision to entertain those we can make those changes here and then what we can do is we can index the non-resident quotas 
off the 1331 resident quotas uh, through the array process, but that'll take longer than you want to sit around and wait for today. So if there was a motion to base all the non-resident quotas okay. on so your success. You recommend that we do, we do go through the uh, uh, 1371 muzzleloader and the uh, 1341 uh, archery. Uh, both residents. Both yeah, residents. residents. And, and then do the, uh, okay. So uh, we, we need start, to. We start at the top. Um, with 031, which was the first unit to be modified for rifle, uh, we'll make those same modifications, uh, which was all the way down through 043, 46, was last year's quotas. So uh, I guess we you were. saying for non residents or you're saying for muzzleloader? For muzzleloader. So. So I, we just uh, start plugging in these numbers based on the action that was taken on the rifle, whether it was a, a hard value that Lincoln County suggested or 2011's quota. We, we put them in, we review them. There will be a slight modification to uh, Area 14's quota because it was middle of the road, um, and I think we'll be close. And do the same thing for archery. And that's for resident? For resident. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to do that now? or? Yes. Okay. Is it going to take you time? No, we're ready. Right here. So we're going to go seven. Okay. Starting at 031. Uh, we're just looking at last year's quota. Seven, seven. Uh, I guess for the Sheldon, split the difference, go five. Uh, Two for 034, four, 035, three for 041, 24 for 043. And then we're going to go with 75% uh, of last year's. It's a 38. 38. <laughs> So we'll go down, yeah, help me out. Which, um, we down, we're down to okay, we're down uh, 111. Okay, we got 30. That's 30. Yep, 30. That's 114, so now we're going with last year's recommendations. 46. 46. 121 is at 19. 19. 13 is at 32. 22 is at 35. Oh, yeah, and that's it. Those are all the... Oh, wait a minute, we got uh, increase, so now, increase to 5 from 3 for mineral and 202, yeah. 205, All right, so for 14, um, uh, 425 is a 78% increase. From 239. So what I, what I would recommend is applying 78% to last year's quota for the Area 14 muzzleloader. And that should approximate the, the change relative to that change to the rifle. Right hey Mike, don't you need to do that off the 26? Well, we were, well, we, no, I was, was 239 was last year's quota. Okay. So I'd be uh, 30, 35. And you got uh, 202, 205, <coughs> 206 going from 3 to 5. Okay, well, so now we go to uh, area 16. You didn't have any recommendation in here from, uh, from 9. Okay, so they didn't have any, they just modified their rifle. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. They so didn't now do muzzleloader or archery. So two, two, five, two, 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 five, two, six. Five to three, three to five. Three to five. So they want an increase. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's it. Um, Lincoln County had one that was contrary to White Pine, but it was uh, two less. Or five so let's less. go now with uh, Lincoln County recommendations for 22, 23, 24. Hey, Mike. The, yeah. Esmeralda wanted. Uh, That's right. They wanted six. I think wasn't it? And yep. 11, six. Oh, yeah. Got it. 
Lincoln at 22. 30? 23. Well, 30, 22, yeah, we 30. Got, we already got uh, White Pine in there. Well, we were going <coughs> to Lincoln. Are you doing this just proportional off of uh, what we've already approved on the rifle? In the event that there wasn't a hard number provided, we're doing it with a commensurate percentage from the 1331. Okay, is, it, is this purely mathematical? Is this something we can vote on? Uh, yeah, it's, as a, yeah, you can certainly. We're just getting a starting point here and letting you see what it looks like, and we can go from there. Um, I'm just wondering if we ought to not uh, make a motion to uh, to approve um, that that ma mathematical methodology and just let you do the numbers just like I mean is it any different than what we were proposing for the non-residents I mean just take a break let them deal with it well we're done right, with we're the muzzle loader okay yeah. well why don't you go ahead ready. and do uh, do archer at the same time so we can deal with them both if there's a new yeah. If there's a new recommendation, do you want to hear the cabs, or do you want to just accept them? Well, we'll put them down. You can look at okay. them. And, yeah. Okay, we'll put them down. So uh, we're going to go. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and take off uh, a couple minute break uh, while they uh, while they're doing this, and uh, so. Uh, and depth, same thing.